Before switching on a radar, always visually check that the scanner is clear and not fouled by flags or hail yards. Turn the display brilliance control to zero or minimum. Set the gain to zero. Set the variable range marker brilliance to zero. The NTC clutter should be set to zero. The anti rain clutter should be set to zero. When the radar set is switched off, its screen is blank. The power button has to be operated to turn it on. Radar sets require a warm-up period of about 2 or 3 minutes before the transmitter is ready for use. In standby mode, the system would now be ready, but without the scanner rotating or transmitting. Once the warm-up period has ended, the radar can be switched on to start the scanning. There may be an image on the screen. But it is unlikely to be very good quality until you follow the steps to optimize the picture. Ensure the power switch from the ship's mains is on. The important feature of the radar display is that the echo should appear at a distance from the origin that is proportional to the range of the target. This slide represents a ship at the center with a detectable target 10 miles away on the starboard quarter and the ship's radar is on the 12 mile range. At the time when the pulse leaves the scanner, a spot of light leaves the origin and sets off to the edge of the screen. The speed of the spot is set by the range scale selected is such that the time taken to transit the radius of the screen is the same as that for a radar pulse to travel the actual distance represented by the radius, and back. A radar display is an electronic device to present radar data to the operator. Modern systems typically use some sort of raster scan display to produce a map-like image. A plan position indicator or PPI is a type of radar display that represents the radar antenna in the center of the display, with the distance from it drawn as concentric circles. As the radar antenna rotates, a radial trace on the PPI sweeps in unison with it about the center point. It is the most common type of radar display. The range scale selected, during setup, largely depends on where the ship is, and what targets are available. Usually, the radar is set up in a port, so targets are abundant. And you are going to be using the radar for pilotage out of the port, so setting up on the 3 mile, or even the 1.5 mile range, is applicable. If the radar is being set up in an open, calm sea, target might be harder to find. We might set up on the 12 mile, or even 24 mile range. Ideally, short pulse is used for short ranges, up to 3 nautical miles, and long pulse for long ranges more than 12 nautical miles. But we can use the short pulse in long range and vice versa. Ideally, short pulse is used for short ranges, up to 3 nautical miles, and long pulse for long ranges more than 12 nautical miles. But we can use the short pulse in long range and vice versa. When you have set a suitable range, so that some targets are visible, adjust the brilliance knob. Brilliance is adjusted to match the brightness of all screen elements to suit the ambient lighting. It will affect the data readouts as well as the radar picture. At this stage, you want to see a faint sweep going around the screen. With the overall brightness set by the brilliance knob, you can now set the specific level for the radar targets. The gain knob alters the amplification of echoes returning from targets, to obtain maximum sensitivity without background noise obscuring the details. The action of the gain control is similar to setting the volume on a domestic radio, where too high a level will introduce unwanted hum or hiss. Turn the knob up, until some background speckle appears on the display. Then adjust down for the minimum speckle, without removing every last dot. This will ensure that you are set for maximum sensitivity. As you adjust the gain knob, always pause for a few moments to allow the sweep to redraw the radar image before making further adjustment. We must use sea control only when we have moderate to rough sea or when we think that interference on the radar is because of sea state. Otherwise, we should not use the sea control. In the calm sea if we see clutters, 
It is better to reduce the gain than increase the sea control. Moreover we should not try to remove the interference at long range with sea control. This is because the interference from the sea will be at close range only. The correct way to set this control is, as follows, 1. Increase the gain to the maximum. 2. Reduce the sea controls to the minimum. 3. Reduce the gain to a level where most of the clutters are just removed and the targets can be distinguished. 4. If required increase the sea control to reduce the sea clutters near to the center of screen. We use rain control to reduce the clutter echo caused by rain. Rain clutter is typified by having a continuous return over a long range and at wide angles. Unlike the returns from sea clutter, which tend to be very spiky, the spikes resulting from particular instantaneous sea waves, rain clutter has a very smooth overall response. It is a problem for the user of the radar because the generally increased levels of the total radar return caused by precipitation clutter can mask other targets. There are a few options for heading on a modern radar set, but before selecting your preference, make sure the heading displayed on the radar is aligned with the master gyro and repeaters. The default orientation of a radar screen places the ship's heading at the top of the screen. Any contacts at the upper right of the screen represent targets on the ship's starboard bow, whilst those at the upper left are from targets on the port bow. Contacts in the lower half of the screen are from targets somewhere astern of your ship. This basic orientation is termed head up and is popular with many small craft users because of the ease of establishing contact position in relation to the ship. A major drawback of head up mode is that if your ship changes heading, all contacts are redrawn in a new position on the next rotation of the scanner. If your ship is yawing in a seaway, the image on the screen is constantly jittering back and forth, making it difficult to keep a proper plot and hence determine risk of collision. One of the major benefit of North Up is the alignment with the chart, making navigation easier, since land features are more reconnaissable and courses and bearings are more obvious. Despite the disadvantage, for collision avoidance, that determining port or starboard and ahead or astern is not so intuitive, North Up is the main choice of most professional navigators. The radar can be used to offset the position of the ship from the center of the screen. The navigator can use this mode, in relative motion, to see more of what is ahead. Navigators also offset the ship from the center of the screen, when using the radar in true motion mode. In true motion, the land is stationary and the origin and the sweep move across the display and have to be reset periodically. The automatic tuning on modern radar sets will do a better job than a human, but humans have to check that it is working properly. We need to perform radar performance tests at least every watch. But most of the times navigators fail to perform this test every watch. Sometimes it is not done for weeks and they make the entry in the logbook without doing the test. Radar performance test checks the transmission and receiving power of the radar. For example if the transmission power of the radar is not enough, radar may not be able to paint some of the target at all. Or radar may only be able to paint the targets with very less sensitivity with faint echoes.